organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, GOP presidential contenders are split on how to deal with illegal immigration. Hear what some candidates had to say this weekend. And this Thanksgiving break marked the 10-year anniversary of the old Capitol fire. Hear from an employee who was on campus during the blaze. And the Hawkeye football team finished up their season on Friday with a loss in Lincoln. Check out sports for more. All that and more is coming your way next. Daily Iowan TV starts now. Thanks for tuning in to your Sunday edition of Daily Iowan TV, your television news, sports, and weather source for the Daily Iowan. I'm John Detcott. And I'm Emily Bussey. This Thanksgiving break marked the 10th anniversary of the fire at the Old Capitol. On November 20th, 2001, a fire devastated the iconic Old Capitol Dome. That morning at 9 a.m., the blaze engulfed the 160-year-old dome and bell, damaging the original tower of the state's first Capitol building. Officials later said a torch or heat gun sparked the fire accidentally. Because of a firewall installed below the tower, much of the building's interior was saved from the flames. The bell was the only object ruined by the fire. Shala Ashworth, who saw the fire and rebuilding process firsthand, said the Capitol was damaged but never destroyed. It is the center of the community, for the university, and it is also a symbol of excellence for the state of Iowa. And even though we had a disaster and kind of put us back on our heels for a few years, it still stands for those things. The museum is marking the anniversary with a special exhibit and an upcoming lecture by Ashworth. A new sex shop is set to open downtown after months of difficulty securing an Iowa City location. Two local women plan on opening Toolbox, what they call a sex-positive feminist sex shop, above Jimmy John's on Washington Street. For months, the co-owners dealt with landlords who were not willing to rent to a sex-themed store. The store will also sell books covering feminist, gay, and lesbian topics. And under city regulations, the store can only have 25% of its floor space occupied by adult products. The co-owner said the shop aims to open by mid-December and create a positive, welcoming atmosphere. Iowa City businesses are working to encourage people to do their holiday shopping locally. To get people to shop in Iowa City past the post-Thanksgiving spending spree, downtown businesses held the second annual Small Businesses Saturday yesterday, offering special deals to customers. And Occupy Iowa City protesters are also supporting the local shopping movement. Occupiers said putting local businesses first should be a year-round effort, not limited to holidays. At least one Iowa caucus candidate is stepping away from his party on immigration. At a debate last week, presidential hopeful Newt Gingrich said Republicans should adopt an immigration policy that won't separate immigrant families. He added that the government should provide illegals with a path to legal residency, but not citizenship. Other candidates have criticized Gingrich's position. John Huntsman said today the government should focus on securing the border and using new technology and on-the-ground enforcement. Securing the border, he said, is completely doable. And Herman Cain said the federal government shouldn't give any special passes to illegal immigrants, and those hoping to come to the United States should use the immigration system already in place. Presidential hopeful Harry Braun has dropped out of the race for the Democratic nomination after he says state officials were unreceptive to his message. Instead, Braun announced recently he'll run as an independent. The former Democratic challenger to President Barack Obama said Democratic support favors the incumbent, leaving him no choice but to switch parties. Braun's campaign has focused on energy policy and stripping power away from the president and Congress. An Iowa City man is facing child endangerment, domestic abuse, and possession of marijuana charges following a reported incident at his home. According to the Johnson County Sheriff's Office, 29-year-old Rocky Moore Rains allegedly lunged at his girlfriend, shoved, and kicked her after she took their baby from his arms. She reportedly grabbed the baby after she realized Rains was intoxicated. And still more to come from Daily Iowa TV, the UI's music department is still struggling three years after the 2008 flood. Find out what they're doing to cope. Plus, in sports, the men's basketball team has lost two straight. See if they are able to get back into the win column this weekend. All of this and more to come, but first, let's take a look at our local weather forecast from Daily Iowa TV's Giovanna Simich. Thanks, guys. Looks like the unseasonably warm weather we had last week is on its way out and winter is becoming a cold reality. Thanksgiving break is over, and on Monday morning, you'll be dreading your walk to class as it will, it will only be around 30 degrees. In the afternoon, it's going to warm up a bit, but still be chilly with 40 degrees accompanied by sunny skies. 
In the evening, clouds will roll in and the weather will drop into the low 30s. And looking at, at your extended forecast, the rest of the week looks to be about the same. Highs hovering around 40 degrees and lows in the 20s. Luckily, no precipitation is expected, so that means no, there's no snow in our immediate future. That's a look at your local weather forecast. Back to you guys at the desk. The world-renowned UI professor emeritus Jaime Voxman died over Thanksgiving break at the age of 99. Voxman was a well-respected music educator nationwide and the UI School of Music director for more than 25 years. UI officials named the Voxman Music Building, which was destroyed by the 2008 flood after Voxman in 1995. Retired UI Arts Center Relations Director Peter Alexander told the Daily Iowan that Voxman spent his life doing what he wanted to do. Voxman died November 21st. And more than three years after the flood of 2008, the UI's music department has turned to the Iowa City community to help find a home for the department's instruments, specifically those they can't be moved, like the organs. Daily Iowa TV correspondent Reese Gretzky took a closer look at the displaced organ department. Over the past few years since the flood, churches, buildings, and local businesses of Iowa City have been housing the university's music department, but they have finally found a somewhat permanent location at the old Capitol Mall downtown. Unfortunately, there are still problems as the 15 students studying the organ are not able to practice certain times of the day due to the location being at a mall. We have three practice organs here um, that aren't meant for performance but allow students to you know, use their feet and hands at the same time. And the problem here is that the, the mall is only open till 11, 11 p.m. Because, you know, we're attached to this mall, we can't have students running around in here, say, at 3 in the morning, yeah. because, you know, they could get into the mall, and the mall is not interested in that. So they actually can only practice from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., you know, which for students is hard, because I, I, I was a student once. I remember my best work usually happened, like, after 11 p.m. With two of the five practice organs located in the same room at the Riverside Recital Hall, allowing only one student to practice at a time, master student Patrick Boudier said that finding practice time can be very difficult and frustrating, but that they are very lucky to have been able to restore most of the organs to perfect condition even after the flood's water damage. And despite the location changes that the department has gone through, Iowa still remains a top-notch music institution. Reese Gretzky, DITV. And boys as young as nine years old may soon be vaccinated against HPV, a sexually transmitted virus. The human papillomavirus can cause cancer, and federal regulators have extended its recommendation to vaccinate young boys. One UI doctor was on the advisory committee for the FDA when the vaccine was approved and said though the vaccine is not mandatory, it's a positive choice. Iowa City City Council said they will most likely approve recent recommendations to crack down on bars with 21 ordinance exemptions at next week's meeting. The Partnership for Alcohol Safety recently presented several recommendations to the council, such as implementing wristbands and lowering Paula ratios. Some bar employees, such as one from the mill, said they support the move, and the employee said that it's unfair that some bar owners use their exemption to exploit loopholes in the ordinance. You can read what more bar employees had to say in tomorrow's pages of The Daily Iowan. An aid for U.S. veterans today is critical, according to former Secretary of State Colin Powell. With the influx of more and more veterans returning home from Iraq and Afghanistan, the issues are growing. Powell said Sunday that the Pentagon is currently seized with the problem of veterans committing suicide. Also, more veterans are returning with severe brain injuries, leaving parents and family members to bear the financial and emotional burden. Powell said government disability payments are especially crucial. And though Powell said the Department of Veterans Affairs is working to provide aid, he called for all Americans to step up their support efforts. And now let's go to Daily Island TV Sports' Nick Robertson for the latest on Hawkeye Athletics. The Iowa Hawkeye football team closed out their regular season on Friday. The Hawks were looking to finish strong after a season filled with missed opportunities and disappointment. Daily Iron TV Sports Director Jake Abrams was at the game. The Hawkeyes back in Nebraska for the first time in 11 years. Sean Prater returned home and it was senior day at Memorial Stadium. Gillian! And for the first time ever, these two teams were playing for this, the Heroes Game Trophy. Both teams looking to enhance their bowl pick, but this one was all Nebraska. 
early in the first. Iowa defense looking sharp, forcing Nebraska to punt. The Iowa D looked good all night, but every time the Huskers got the ball back, they couldn't get anything going. They held Vandenberg to 182 yards on the afternoon. Huskers get the ball back and lead to a field goal, and the Balloons set sail out of the sea of red. Huskers up 3-0. Hawks again with the ball, again nobody to throw to. Husker defense held Marvin McNutt to only 29 yards and four catches. Hawks forced to punt once again. This time it would hurt even more as the Huskers capitalize with this touchdown. Kyler Reed makes it 10-0 Nebraska. Second half, Hawkeyes still have no answer. Vandenberg picked off at the Nebraska 23 by Andrew Green. Rex Burkhead and the Nebraska running game plus their shutdown defense earns them the first possession of the Heroes Trophy. I always frustrated. I mean, I hate losing. Um, you know, it's the worst part about playing sports is you have to lose sometimes, but uh, you know, it's a part of it, and you you live and you learn. Credit goes to them. They, they did everything they had to do. They played well offensively. They played great on defense, and they uh, good on special teams and no, no turnovers. So, I mean, they, they played uh, just about a – kind of game you'd script out if you're if you're them it may have been one of Iowa's best games defensively but there was one man they couldn't stop Nebraska running back Rex Burkhead he carried the ball 38 times setting a new school record and in response Iowa had no answers offensively so they dropped their record to seven and five and we'll wait over the next month until we hear what bowl game they receive from Lincoln Nebraska Jake Abrams Daily Iowa TV now that the dust has settled on another Big Ten regular season we can take a look at how everyone finished the Spartans finished atop the Legends Division with a dominant 10-2 record and, and only one conference loss. And despite Michigan's late season push, they will finish second. Nebraska will finish third in their first season in the Big Ten, while Iowa will end, end their season in, the, in fourth. The Leaders Division will finish up with Ohio State dropping all the way to fourth place behind the surprising Purdue Boilermakers. And even with the adversity surrounding the program, Penn State managed to land a second spot. And that leaves the Badgers of Wisconsin in first place, setting up the rematch against Michigan State next week in Indianapolis. Fran McCaffrey and his Iowa Hawkeyes were looking to avoid their third straight loss on Sunday, and they would have to earn a win against a good Indiana-Purdue Port Fort Worth team. A win could be key for the Hawkeyes to gain some confidence before the ACC Big Ten Challenge. The Hawkeyes gained comfortable lead early in the game. That lead was helped by senior Matt Gatons hitting three of his first four shots and this breakaway slam from junior Eric May. Later in the half, true freshman Aaron White would receive an assist from senior point guard Bryce Cartwright to hit a floater in the lane, putting the Hawkeyes up by 10 heading into the break. 60% of the field, led by, led by the junior Frank Gaines, Pete, IPFW made things more interesting, shooting over 60% from the field. Gaines would finish the game with 25 points, but eventually the Hawkeyes would prove that they are the better team with their physicality and pulled away, taking the win 82-72. Here's what Coach Fran McCaffrey had to say after the game. The good thing is different players are stepping up. I thought Marble was great today. I thought Cartwright was great today, and he hadn't been so good. I mean, admittedly, uh, you know, I thought Brommer gave us quality minutes. I thought Gabe was solid. One note McCaffrey said in his post-game presser, Devin Archie did not play yesterday due to a sprained wrist, but she'll be back soon. And the Hawkeyes will, will be taking on Clemson this Tuesday with an 8-15 tip-off. And hopefully this, this Hawkeye team isn't, isn't done for the season. They have still have a lot of season left to play. Back to you guys in the newsroom. Thanks, Nick, and only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek at Monday's pages of the Daily Iowan. Read about the health care debate as the Daily Iowan kicks off a 10-day series exploring the major issues in the 2012 presidential race. Plus, read Daily Iowan's sports recap of the Hawks' loss to Nebraska this past weekend. And before we go, here's one last look at Monday's weather forecast. You can expect mostly sunny skies with a high of 41 degrees, and going into the evening, expect a low of about 27 degrees and partly cloudy skies. That's your latest update from Daily Iowan TV. You can tune in at the same time tomorrow or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.